I have been spraying paint on my furniture makeovers for years now, but I've always used a gravity-fed pneumatic gun that requires a huge air compressor, and I get asked every day about electric options for spraying. So today I'm going to be working on a couple of smaller pieces that have been kicking around in my garage and trying out the Wagner Flexio 590 electric sprayer for the very first time. Welcome or welcome back. If this is your first time here, my name is Katie. I am a full-time furniture flipper, finding pieces of furniture that are worn out, outdated, giving them a whole new lease on life and sharing the entire process here with you. If you are interested in seeing tons more modern furniture flips, transformations, makeovers, and the process behind those, go ahead, do us both a favor and tap that subscribe button. These two little tables are what I'm going to be working on in this video. I have a sofa table or entryway table and a tiny accent table that are both in desperate need of some leg repairs and a little freshen up. Starting with the sofa table, I need to glue and clamp these legs and bring everything back together so this table is not wobbly. I flipped the table upside down and squeezed some wood glue into these loose spots and then I just let gravity do its thing and pull it down through the joint. I put one of my giant clamps across the base and tightened it as much as I could. Then I used a blunt tipped syringe with some more wood glue to get it into the other spots where it hadn't already dripped down and added another clamp to hold everything nice and tight while it makes a strong bond. This little accent table is also in need of some gluing and clamping. Luckily, I've got access to the screws that hold all of these legs on. So I just need to pop some more glue into the dowel hole and retighten all of the screws. Next, I'm going to address the top of this sofa table. It is a gorgeous veneer, but it definitely needs some love. And I can see from this side view that I have a nice thick layer. So I should be safe to sand off the old finish and stain without damaging anything. I added some 100 grit sandpaper to my small surf prep sander and worked away at removing all of this old failing finish. Once I was done with that initial sanding, I noticed that there was a section along the edge that was loose. I used a box cutter to very gently pry up the veneer as much as I could, and then with that handy little glue syringe, I squeezed some glue in there to re-secure it. I got that clamped down and left it to dry as well. Once all of my repairs were dry, I continued sanding the top with some 150 grit sandpaper to smooth it out and start getting it ready to restain. I also scuff sanded the base of the table to get that ready for paint. Because this table is so detailed, I used a medium grit foam abrasive to help me get around all of the rounded spots without grinding anything flat. This is a task that I definitely do by hand if I didn't have this foam sanding option. In fact, after I removed the handle from the smaller table, I did just that, scuffed it up by hand. I gave everything a quick wipe down with a damp microfiber cloth to remove any of that sanding dust and then I was ready to prime. This is the Wagner Flexio 590, which is an electric turbine sprayer. It comes with two cups and two nozzles. The larger cup and eye spray nozzle are for large jobs like fences or walls. And this detail nozzle is for smaller pieces like furniture projects. So that's what I'll be using today. I'm using my favorite Zinzer Bin Shellac Base Primer, and I'm hoping that I can clean this stuff out of this gun easily. I have had issues getting it all the way cleaned out of my pneumatic guns because they don't break down as far and it's hard to get into all the teeny tiny spots so this stuff gets stuck. 
And I should also note that this primer will seize up and turn rock solid if it comes into contact with any water. So just make sure that whatever you're pouring it into is completely dry before adding this primer. I'm going to be spraying in a downward direction for these tables. So I made sure that this little pickup hose was pointed downwards to the tip of the gun so that it can pick up the product out of the bottom of the cup while it's tilted forward. Then I just attached the turbine and I can adjust my spray settings. I read through the instruction manual and I think I need to have this X boost dial at a three or four and I adjusted my trigger dial that controls the amount of product coming out to about the middle position. This sprayer setup does come with a big test sheet that you can tape up onto your wall and test out your sprayer settings to make sure that you've got everything dialed in before you start at your piece. But I like to live on the edge, so I'm just gonna go straight in and hope for the best. I tried to keep the gun about six to eight inches away from the table and moved it back and forth slowly to get a feel for the flow of the primer. I'm personally used to using a gravity fed style gun and I can tilt that a little bit without disrupting the flow of paint, but I had to remind myself that this gun doesn't allow for that. You really need to keep it straight and you can rotate the nozzle if you need to change the direction of the spray pattern. I did notice that the Wagner is a little splattery or the mist is just not as fine as I'm used to with my other gun. So it was really important to pull the trigger away from the edge and let it spit for a second or two before going ahead and moving it across the piece. It did all level out pretty well while it dried, but I did definitely see the difference. This primer dries really fast, so as soon as I was finished priming the bottoms of both tables, I flipped them over and sprayed another coat on the tops. As soon as I was done with the primer, I removed the turbine from the gun and emptied any leftovers back into the can. Like I said, this stuff does not like water. It requires ammonia for cleanup, so I poured a little into the cup and swished it around. Then I came into my sink and broke it down all the way, making sure that the ammonia got onto every surface before I added any water into the sink, and then I could just rinse it out. I let the primer dry for about an hour and then I came back and smoothed out what was left of that textured finish with a fine grit sanding pad and got ready for paint. I need to reassemble my clean gun and that was really easy to do. I've chosen Melange Mineral Paint in the color Old Soul Grey for these guys. I gave it a good mix up and then poured out the entire pint into my sprayer cup. Then I reattached the turbine and started to spray my color. I kept my spraying settings the same for the paint. The X Boost dial is at a four and the trigger dial is about halfway in. And that seemed to work really well. Again, the mist was not as fine as I'm used to, but Melange does level itself out really well, so it wasn't an issue. Once I had the small table done, I wanted to open up the gun and take a look at how much paint I had left. I think I've got enough to finish the larger table as well, but this gun does seem to use slightly more product than my pneumatic sprayer. Not a ton more material, but I can definitely notice a difference. I 
ended up getting great full coverage with two coats of paint so I cleaned out my sprayer again and let everything dry out overnight. The next morning everything was really smooth and dry and I was ready to seal these guys up. I'm using a Varathene diamond wood finish in a satin sheen. It's really important to give your top coats a thorough mix before you use them. So I did that and then added it into my clean sprayer cup. This top coat is the thinnest of the products that I'm using on these projects. So I turned the X-Boost dial down to a three and held the gun just a little further away from the surface so I didn't end up causing myself any drips. Again, it was super spattery, so every time I pulled the trigger, I had to wait a full second for it to get all those really big droplets out before pointing it at my project. I ended up spraying three total coats of Varathane over both tables, waiting about an hour in between. And if you have any roughness between coats, you can give it a light sand with a super fine sandpaper before applying your next coat. Before I'm done with these, I want to stain the top of this sofa table. I'm using Minwax oil-based stain in special walnut and so carefully applying it with one of the kids' old socks. I took my time to get right up to the edge of my paint without touching it. And then I let my stain dry overnight again and used another clean old sock to apply three coats of this wipe-on satin poly. I'm using this top coat over the stain because it was oil-based and this is an oil-based top coat. You want to try and keep water-based products with water-based products and oil-based with oil-based whenever you can. This product will also amber a little bit over time so it's great to use over wood but not so great over paint. All in all, I think the Wagner Flexio 590 system is a great beginner friendly option for anyone that is looking into spraying their furniture but not necessarily interested in the investment in money or space involved in having a giant air compressor like I've been using. I really love how easy it is to break down and clean out especially with that shellac based primer that I love so much. It can be really tricky to get out of equipment and that just wasn't an issue with this gun. I am definitely going to continue using this sprayer on my next few projects so that I can get to know it a little bit better and hopefully troubleshoot some of the spitting and spattering that I was having issues with today. But I am very impressed with the smooth professional finish that I was able to get. Thank you so much for hanging out with me again today and I will catch you guys next time.